We have been looking at a lot of different queries. In this video, we're going to look at how to use a wildcard search criteria in a query that will help you to enhance the power of your queries and searches. So to do this, I've created a simple table of information, which has basically got a candidate's surname together with their test result. We've just got to use these two things with lots of data in this, all 5,000 records there. So we've got lots of data to be able to search. I'm going to create a simple query in design view using that table that we've just looked at. And I'm just going to add the last name and the results to the query and have a quick look to see what it's looking like. Yep, that looks fine. The first wildcard that you should be aware of already because you'll have learned it at a, an earlier lesson at a lower level of uh, Microsoft Access is the um, asterisk or the star sign. And it's used in this way. If I want to find the surname, the last name of everybody who begins with a T, for example, I can put a T in my criteria and follow it with the star sign, the multiplication sign, whatever you want to call that. Basically, that means find anything that has a T at the beginning and anything after it at all. doesn't matter what, just anything. Let's have a look and see what that does. Hopefully, you can see there that it's filtered out 261 records and it's that they all begin with a T. And there's all kinds of things there. It's picked up Tyler, Taylor, Thompson, anything that begins with a T, it's picked up. You should already be aware of that. But remember, you can use the asterisks in the other way as well. We could have, for example, anything that ends in a T by putting the star first and then the letter T. When we run that query, we can see it's picked up every name that's got the letter T at the end. So the star basically means anything. The next wildcard we want to have a look at, and you might well be aware of, is the question mark. The question mark works in a similar way to the asterisk or the star sign, except it means one character. So BE question mark question mark means it will only bring out four letter words that begin with BE. The question mark can be a letter or a number, but just one instance of it. So let's have a look and see what that does. Yep, it's brought out the bells and the bends. Just to prove that it's only brought out four letter words and it's not there by fluke, let's just change that to B, E, asterisk, and that will find any length of word that begins with B, E. Yep, Benson's, Bewley's, etc. So that's a good way of seeing the difference between the star and the question mark. The star means anything afterwards or before, whereas the question mark means one instance of anything. The next wildcard we're going to look at is using square brackets. Anything that you enclose in square brackets has got to be included in the results. For example, if we want to find words that begin with AD, A, but then anything else after that, this forces it To find any word that begins with AD, the next thing has got to be one of the letters inside the square brackets. And I've only put one there for the moment, but I will change it in a minute. And then anything else afterwards. So let's have a look and see what that does. Yep, it's found all the ADs and every word has got an A after the D. To show you that in a little bit more detail, let's change this to AD square brackets. And then the third letter has got to be an A or a D. And then we'll put anything else after it. So that's going to look at any word that begins AD. The third letter has got to be an A or a D. And then anything else after it. So if we look at the results of that, 
it's picked up all the A, D, and the third letter's a D, third letter's an A, third letter's a D, third letter's an A. You could also have something like B, square brackets, A, E, O, square brackets, L, L. And that would find ball, B, A, L, L. It would find bell, B, E, L, L. It would find bowl, B, O, L, L. But it wouldn't find bull, B, U, L, L, because there isn't a U inside the brackets. I'll just change that slightly. What that will do now is find ball, B-A-L-L, -L, and bell, B-E-L-L. -L. But we can turn that on its head. If we put an exclamation mark inside the brackets, then what that means is find everything apart from the letter A and E. So that will find bill, and it will find bull. So that is just some of the wildcards and how we can use them. And remember, all these things can be combined. So you can use wildcards with the greater than sign. And you really need to experiment with your data to see how all these things fit together. It can be difficult to remember these, so I strongly suggest that you look up wildcards in help. And have a good look at how the help puts things across and the suggestions that it makes. And then try it with your own data. See what works, what doesn't work. I'll also put these on the end of this video so you can look at them at leisure. That's wild cards.